Hi guys, it's Johnny from Confident Games. Uh, so today I'm going to show you what uh, how my code is structured. So let's start with the first script, which is our base character. Okay, so I'm uh, I have organized my script in uh, folders. I recommend you also do in such a way, uh, but uh, it's your choice. Okay, so these are called some core character and core scripts, which uh, without it you cannot your game cannot function. So that's why I read them core. Okay, so let's open up the base character. Uh, so basically it's a very simple and shortened script to which can be attached to any kind of uh, a moving characters or entity whatever you try to call okay so first of all we it's a public class is a base it uh, inherits from mono behavior uh, mono behavior is an unity class or something that's a uh, if we and has unity as implemented so all the unity functions is includes in the mono behavior okay and uh, it's a public enum i all I assume that uh, you already know what is an enum if not you can always google and see how what is an enum and how to use them so basically what i'm doing is checking what kind of character is, is it play controlled by player or an artificial intelligence that is not controlled by player meaning like it's not a playable character okay and then we are checking what kind of states in we are in like public and um character states right so you can use this for enemy and as well as uh, a player or npc and things like that okay and uh, we have uh, you can include as many states you have in your game so for me right now i'm just having idle walking and dashing okay so that's what i have included okay and then we going to have uh, character tribes I know most of the time people make uh, like uh, things public but uh, if you do that you are breaking the rules or the principles of solid principles or like object oriented programming you know you should uh, make things always uh, whenever possible private not public basically make things private matters private you know you do not want them to be accessed uh, by another scripts or things like that uh, which can create a lot of problems and necessary problems that you don't want so that's why i'm trying to use private in when whenever i can okay and i have added serialized field then you can check uh, on the unity inspector so and uh, what type of character uh, it is okay so for example if i go over here uh, select my player and you see base character you can select it's in a player or an ai okay so that's the base character over here and uh, this is gonna be a little bit longer video i will just go through all my scripts uh, most likely so okay and uh, so basically then you have a state manager for changing animation states and you just change states and like int and it's gonna be an array of states so that's what it is uh, so that's the base character and the next thing is uh, our is gonna be our character controller okay this is another core script as you see in my folder it is a character controller over here okay so let's uh, explain you what I'm doing over here alright so this is public because you want to be accessed okay and private rigid body okay because uh, a rigid body he like uh, we want to make it private right and this is a good practice to make it like that and then access that component by doing this instead of making it public then dragging and dropping in the inspector instead of doing that just make the let's keep things simple okay and this is something called properties okay public property okay current movement you're getting and setting that movement then there is a normal movement okay like a current movement and normal movement and I'm calling the this thing in the awake section because awake is uh, called first in unity execution order I'll provide a link for you to go through that order and see and understand more that uh, when you should call at what thing okay so over here we're setting that normal movement is true so we are enabling the normal movement okay and we're not using the update over here i just left it over here maybe i in the future i need it so i left it okay so now as i mentioned in my previous video uh, like you should use fixed update to calculate your movement or physics based calculation okay so this is our private fixed point okay so we are calculating some physics and uh, you can read about uh, time dot fixed delta time and unity api 
because we're using fixed update over here so that's why you're using fixed delta time instead of like uh, just regular delta time okay and uh, we're moving the position of your body by current move position for example we're first of all calculating the how much uh, when where how should we move and then we are moving by that amount okay then uh, over here we have our vector two new pose and move quasi then you we're doing our new position what we're we doing over here is just moving our the player or any character you have to the new position over here okay so it's called like move position okay and then we are moving uh, setting set our movement like okay so the current movement equals to new position all right so that's what we're doing over here and then uh, we're going to see our character abilities section okay so basically this script is responsible for all kind of character abilities like anything you want okay so over here i'm using protected float uh, protected because i want to get access things from uh, other class and stuff like that okay and horizontal input and vertical input okay so then we are inheriting for more behavior this one then uh, we have this uh, con character controller like we're getting accessing this in our character abilities you can call it character components or whatever you name like i just uh, for me it just makes sense to see it as a character abilities okay and then we have the character walk over here we have the character walk which will go through pretty soon so now over here i'm using the keyword protected virtual void so i can override and access uh, this thing from other scripts that's why i'm doing that so projected virtual over you know virtual void start then we have our protected virtual void update so we can use this for example over here we can use the, that update or anything we wherever we want in all the abilities that we need whoever inherits from this script okay or the class okay so over here we have our handle ability so what does handle ability does it in it uh, runs the internal input and handle input okay so handle input doesn't do anything yet but and our protected virtual void internal input is uh, just getting the i can get access like in the tag manager right in the in input manager i'm still using my, the old uh, input manager because i find it very easy and to use so, so if you example over here you expand and you can see horizontal right and over here okay and to keep things simple i'm using a helper script which i call tag manager and um, anything that is string i'm just uh, naming them as something like this or whatever you prefer so keep the things all the strings in one place and you can just uh, use them whenever you feel like instead of writing the string it's a good practice instead of using the string concatenation or whatever uh, we just use something like this okay it keeps uh, makes things much more easier and there will it is less prone to make some less mistakes okay so now we're going to go to our character walk okay now we have our serialized field private floor as i said you should keep things private not public okay and serialized field to showcase in and change uh, on the speed okay so this is our walk speed now we're getting the move speed get and set and then we are using the over protected override void base start is in whatever this start is doing so for example whatever this start over here is doing is already including in the character walk and then we are assigning this move speed the property to walk speed okay so that's what we're doing then we are doing the handle ability we're overriding this and in inheriting from the character abilities okay it's not inheriting from mono behavior it inheriting from character abilities okay so based on handle ability okay so you already have this handle ability over here right so this is what in, that's what it's running over here based on handle ability and move character okay we are calling this over here and what our move character does we are getting the new vector horizontal input and vertical input what is horizontal input and vertical input so horizontal and input and vertical input is right over here is just getting get access raw 
and the difference between get access and get access raw get access raw is doesn't do any kind of smoothing and when you use get access uh, it uh, has some smoothing effect so in my game i want the character moving very snappy and like uh, just feels right so i'm just using get access raw if you want to use uh, the like get access go ahead if you want that kind of movement is feel free to use that kind of movement okay so let's back to over here and then we are resetting that move speed to walk speed because later we're going to do character run so we are always resetting at the end to move speed equals to walk speed okay so this is one of our default uh, walk speed okay without any modifications now the next script is our character run okay we're going to basically what we're doing again we are inheriting from not mono behavior but character abilities over here and then uh, we can setting our double the speed of um, walking okay so basically we are checking over here we are overriding as you saw in the previous one nothing new and uh, we're getting uh, like the shift okay shift press uh, whenever we press shift we run and whenever we press uh, let go of the shift key we stop running okay so over here what we're doing is equals to character walk dot move speed so basically see over here because we have access because we are using this over here in the handle ability or like the character abilities thing okay so that's why we are can use this okay character walk equals to run speed we're uh, making things run okay now whenever we stop run we just reset speed so over here what does the reset speed does reset speed just uh, make things again the same speed that it was uh, for the walk speed okay so that things are very simple and very clear i hope you understand and as i mentioned i'm not writing line by line and waste your time and mine so i hope uh, you like this structure okay so and the next thing we're going to do is character dash okay over here what we do is like uh, again we're inheriting from the character abilities now we what we need over here dash distance means like uh, how much we are dashing from our initial position to the final position okay and dash duration as the name says it's uh, how much how long we are dashing for okay and private bull is dashing uh, is, uh, is dashing the name should be uh, you should always use some name naming conventions that uh, is self-explanatory for you so even after you come after like a year or whatever to the project you want to update just by looking and reading the name you understand uh, like what it's doing okay so float uh, is a dash timer like what is the timer of the dash right and where is uh, it's dashing from and where is this dash destination is meant where is it going and what is the new position of the dashing from initial position to the uh, new position okay so same thing as uh, last time we what we're doing over here is input get if you press the space bar we start dashing okay now override handle ability for second from something from here okay we are doing this okay so if we check over here if it's dashing okay if it's dashing if the character is dashing and then we check again it's a nested if okay so if the dash timer is less than dash duration we calculate that uh, new position equals to vector dot lerp right what does alert mean it means a vector 2a and b and a float right so that's what we're doing over here as you see the dash dot dash is a vector 2 and dash destination is a vector 2 right so it's a vector a and b so that's what we're saying over here uh dash origin to the dash duration and we are dividing the dash timer by dash duration okay now we're checking over here that controller dot 2d so like controller this is a controller over here where we have named this controller 2d character controller okay excuse me so controller dot to the move position to the new position okay so we are moving from to the new position okay so this is uh, what we're doing okay and then we're adding dash timer plus equals to time dot delta time okay so that's what you do if we are not doing that what else the other thing we just don't dash we just stop dashing okay so when you let go you just dash okay 
now there are two methods over here are like whatever you like to call function if you prefer to call them uh, so private void uh, start dashing so when we start dashing we say say is dashing equals to true okay and we are setting our dash timer equals to zero then we are doing saying normal movement equals to false because uh, we don't want to do anything else and then uh, that's why we're setting things to false so we just want to dash right whenever we in whichever direction we are we press that we dash in that direction okay now we uh, making things dash origin equals to transform dot position transform dot position basically like move one position to another position it's just transform the position uh, you can read this more about on unity api which you can i think you can google okay or just go to unity scripting api and try transform dot position and i think one thing i like to mention over here you should get used to uh, using the unity api scripting api or the manual and always type and for your problems is the best way to see things because is their stuff is their document that's the best place to learn about anything okay now we are calculating how where is our dash destination gonna be so the dash destination equals transform dot position plus vector 3 why you are using vector 3 because if you don't use this in front it's gonna give you an error it's saying like you are doing vector 2 to vector 3 okay so that's why you we use vector 3 in front okay so we're doing controller the current movement normalized multiplied by dash distance okay so the dash distance over here is 5f okay so you can uh, change that in the inspector okay and basically you what we do on stop dashing is like we are not dashing anymore so miss dashing would be false which just makes sense and we are enable the normal regular movement like walking and running all that stuff okay so that's the character dash and the next thing is uh, character flip okay so basically uh like you just flip one whatever way you want okay so basically we're saying like uh what are the flip modes you can have over here again it's inheriting for character abilities and uh, we have a flip mode okay so if you want to add like a uh, mouse direction on instead of uh, you can do that but for now maybe i will add that later but for now i'm just using arrow keys okay like left keyboard arrow keys okay so we have only one flip mode right now uh, which is move direction okay so serialized field flip mode is equals to move direction so this one and uh, threshold is just very small amount like how much uh, like uh, how much movement you want to have then right away it will flip so i put it in a really small so it feels again snappy okay so if flip mode equals to move direction then flip move direction okay else uh, you just add any flip mode that you want to have uh, that you can do like for example if you have some weapon you can uh, point your weapon on that and you can flip on that direction okay so now let's check the flip mode direction over here so if uh, if our magnitude is like more than the threshold we what we do is like uh, check that the movement on x is greater than zero then we flip okay flip on the positive direction else if we this can be only another option that is less than zero then we flip on the other direction so that's what we're doing and over here what we're doing is like we're providing the int we're saying the new direction equals to one which is positive if you see on the local scale right over here local scale this is the local scale if you put it like minus one okay so see it flips right so that's what we're doing in the code all right so over here that's what we're doing and i wanted to add like a absolute base like to I'll, to see if i can do like uh, which wouldn't affect the uh, scaling but uh, it gave me some errors so i re i reverted back to using just the regular and simpler method which is 111 but in this case you cannot scale your character make sure you use your uh, the dimension of your character already set so you don't need to scale things for your character okay or it will always revert back to like a scale ratio of one is to one so that's what we're doing we're just uh, flipping our character okay so that's uh, concludes the 
overview of the character movement and the abilities that I have right now which will uh, will add more later on and uh, see how things goes uh, I plan to add some attack system and combo system later on so that's it guys for this video I know it was a longer video which I could uh, split into different parts but I just felt like I would just sort of show you what I'm doing and what's going on in one short video I hope you like it subscribe to my channel for more content and I'll tell you next time take care keep practicing